Faith is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. Faith can turn difficulty into reality, positive reality. Here's what faith is for. Number one, faith is the ability to see it as it is. Faith doesn't mind seeing it as it is because faith is a miracle worker. Faith does not ignore the negative. Faith uses the negative. Because if there was no negative, there'd be no need for it. If everything is okay, what would you need faith for? You need faith because it isn't okay. Now, what isn't okay? Who knows? The situation that isn't okay isn't okay. So here's what faith does. Number one, faith does not ignore the negative because faith now stands as the miracle worker if you let it work. So faith sees it as it is. If it's ugly, it's ugly. If it isn't working, it isn't working. If it's a mess, it's a mess. It doesn't hurt to call a mess a mess. You don't need to fancy it up here. If it's miserable, it's miserable. If it's broke, it's broke. Faith doesn't mind admitting that. Faith doesn't mind seeing that. Here's why. Number one, you can see it as it is. That's the beginning of faith, seeing it as it is. Now, here's the second step of faith. See it better than it is. Couldn't you see beyond the mess? The mess is for today. Couldn't you look into tomorrow? The answer is yes, I guess I could look into tomorrow. Humans have this incredible ability to look into tomorrow, to look into next week. So we not only have the ability to see it as it is, the beginning of faith, but to see it better than it is. Dream the dreams, make the plans, visualize, use your imagination, see it better than it is. Now here's the third step that turns faith into reality. Make it better than it is. Faith now must be invested in the muscle. But if you invest faith now in the action, you can take any situation and make it better than it is. Next, in the beginning of faith, seeing it as it is, don't see it worse than it is. Some people have this tendency to blow it all out of proportion. They say, well, it can't be that bad. If it's this bad, that's how bad it is. You don't need to multiply how bad it is by 10. That's not necessary here. Just as it is, that's the deal. Don't see it worse than it is. Now here's the next unique key to faith. Don't see it for more than it can become. There's a thin line between faith and folly. Yes, it's possible to see yourself as a millionaire, but not overnight. Somebody says, well, yes, I can see that. Don't see it for more than it can become. Yes, if it dropped out of the sky overnight, but that's not likely. But it's still possible to be a millionaire. It's still possible to be rich and wealthy. So don't see it for more than it can become so that you move into folly instead of faith. Plenty is possible without being foolish in your faith exercise. But now here's two more cautions. Number one, it might be worse than you first see it. You better look underneath. Because sometimes you just look at the surface. You better take a look so that you can really see it as bad as it is. Not to overblow it now, but to make sure you see it as bad as it really is. Now here's the next one. Give yourself a chance to understand that it could be far more in the future than what you can first see. By faith, here's all you can see. But you take the first step. Take the first step of what you can see, but give yourself a chance to be able to see it for more than what you first see. On a foggy night, if all you can see is 100 feet, Here's what you do. Walk that first hundred feet. Now you can see another hundred feet. You can't see the two hundred feet. If, but if you can see a hundred feet, you walk the first hundred feet. Now you can see another hundred feet. So I'm asking you to take the early steps of faith. Whatever you can see it possible to become, start believing that. Have faith for that. And I'm telling you, as that starts to exercise, you'll be able to see it for more and for more and for more. The possibilities will start to increase in your own imagination. I made a t-shirt one time that said, Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. All you want is the strength to get through your life. See, in life, everything that happens to you, there's a lesson in it. There's a lesson in it for you. If you look at it, whatever happens to you, just look at it and view life that you're a student of the universe and say, what's in here for me to learn? You know, I've been going through a lot lately. Somebody sent me a plaque. You know what it said? It said, on the days 
that I feel like I'm not going to make it. On the days that it feels like I can't endure anymore, I think back on my track record for surviving all my bad days. And so far, surviving all my bad days, my track record is 100%. It ain't about the money. I know a lot of very, very rich people that's miserable. Not happy at all. I can bet you most of you are happier than most of the people I know. And I know some very, very wealthy people. And it, money don't make you happy. It helps you through a lot of situations. Really, other than that, it, it's, it's a lot to come with money. But if that's your desire to get more of it, you got to ask God for it. If you want to be happy or successful, you got to ask God for it. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for it. The scripture says, you have not because you ask not. It's a very simple scripture. But listen to me. If you up your ask, he will up his give. If you change what you ask God for, he immediately changes what he gives to you. It's a scripture that's available for everybody. It's not just for rich people. You don't need an education to be successful. I don't. I flunked out of school. Do you know if you had to have an education to be successful, you know how many people wouldn't be successful? What God has for you, quit tying it in education. People kill me. I know people got two degrees for to go back to school and get another one. If you got two of them that ain't working for you, why would you go get another one of them? That's crazy to me. That's crazy. I know people that's mastered and PhD though. Ain't even working. You don't need that. And here's the last, my challenge for you. It comes from the old prophet. Here's what he said. If you work on your gifts, if you work on your abilities, if you work on your skills, if you work on your gifts, they will make room for you. They will make a place for you. If you become attractive, you'll have an attractive place. If you work on your skills, they will put you in an unusual place. You don't have to worry about the place. It is right now being prepared for you to qualify. And if you work on your gifts, gifts of language, gifts of intelligence, gifts of faith, gifts of helping others, gifts of influence, if you'll work on those gifts, you'll always have a place. I got to be one of the great examples. Look where my gifts have brought me to this place. I worked hard on my gifts. I worked hard on my skills. I worked hard on my delivery. I worked hard on my ability to affect other people with language and words and experiences. And then my gifts brought me to unique places now around the world. A unique place in Australia, a unique place in South Africa, a unique place in Bangkok, a unique place in Singapore. You name the country and the city. Unique places I've had. Because my gifts, I worked on my gifts and made myself valuable enough to be invited to these places, the same thing is going to happen for you, without a doubt. Find some cause that you believe in. What is it that you would like to give the planet? What kind of legacy do I want to leave? What kind of statement do you want to make with your life? What three things you want said when you die? What contribution do you want to make? I don't know what you want to do. I don't know what you want to achieve with your life. Here's what I know about you. That you have greatness within you. That you have things and gifts and talents that you've been bestowed with. That as you work consciously to cultivate and bring them out and develop a sense of purpose in knowing that your life can make a difference. Decide to make and leave a legacy with your life. I say to you that the planet will never be the same again because you showed up. So, I now leave here. But uh, I have a promise. I will not leave you behind. I'll take you with me in my heart and in my thoughts. God bless. You're not supposed to know. You're not supposed to know. The, life is a mystery. If you take away the mystery and everything was certain, you would need faith. Like, I stand on this stage before you, and to be honest, I never thought I would be doing this. They put me in public speaking in college. I dropped the class on the second day. I despised it. As I was walking out, I'll never forget. I told my buddy, I said, I'd never be needing that. Faith functions best when you don't know. Mm. 
So God often puts us in positions where we don't know to destabilize us from think, relying too much on what we know. Yeah. Like a trainer who starts you out and he starts you out on a weight machine, okay, and then he puts you on a bench and he gives you free weights because now it's less stable. The, the less stable it is, the more muscles you build. Finally, he puts you on a ball where everything's unstable and when he puts you on the ball, he's building up your core. So the more unstable your life becomes, the more you have to go inside yourself to stabilize yourself. You're strong enough to withstand instability. Yeah. And if you knew everything, you'd have no room for faith, for discovery, for innovation, because creativity comes in uncertainty. Yeah. It comes in uncertainty, in the middle of chaos, because after a while, anytime you know too much, you stop living your best self. And the beauty of life is when God takes a situation or a circumstance and he puts you on a path that you never imagined and your life begins to flourish and serve as a blessing to a lot of people. But more times than not, you hit extreme chaos or extreme opposition on the way to getting to that point. Right? Like you think about the 9-11 incident. I travel a lot. Right. Senseless act. A lot of people lost their lives. Right. And I remember reading an article and in this article, it spoke about the other side of the situation. And it talked about that morning. It was a wife and a husband and they had a daughter. Right. And the wife went to the husband and she said, can you please take our daughter to kindergarten this morning? And the husband said, I really got some meetings I need to be at in that building. And the wife said, can you please do it? He said, I really got some meetings I need to be at. And the wife asked him one more time, can you please? He said, all right, I'll do it. Guy ends up taking a whole day off, ends up sparing his life. One gentleman on the New Jersey Turnpike, accident happens. He's frustrated, he's mad, he can't get to work. Accident ended up sparing his life. One gentleman got a new pair of shoes that day. He's walking, he gets a blister on his foot, he's going back home to change his shoes. He get there, ended up sparing his life. One guy went to a donut and coffee shop, went to get some donuts and coffee. As he's coming out of the shop, somebody spilled some coffee on his shirt, went home to change his shirt, ended up sparing his life. The other side, 